Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Casting the Net. I'm Ryan. I'm Art. And uh, we'd like to welcome you. And uh, we have a very special first episode. Uh, with yeah. us today, we have Tara and Jason Patterson. Um, Tara and Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, welcome. And uh, it's qu quite an honor for us to have you as our first guest. Uh, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, yes. we're honored to be here. Um, what do you want to say about us? Um, well, I guess we'll get you start first. She, right. She's much better with the words than I am, for sure. So. Um, well, we live in Escondido. We've been parishioners at OMC for around six years. We have 10 beautiful children, ranging in ages from 22 to just turned one. Um, my husband is a football coach and athletic director, and I stay home and take care of that rowdy bunch. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's about right. That sums it up. Right. I, yeah, a little bit, I guess, but I think that does sum it up for the most part. Our whole family. So yeah, she does. She's much better with uh, concise words and make and making it sound better. I can so elaborate. I like that. But... Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for starters, I, I believe um, from the the questionnaire that you gave back to us, uh, were you you both were teachers, right? Or when we met, I was a preschool teacher studying to be an elementary school teacher. And Jason has been a high school teacher for, gosh. Yeah, like long. probably like 24 years. I've been uh, coaching football and in, in the beginning stages, wrestling also. And then um, I've taught a variety of subjects. I was principal for two years. I didn't, oh, wow. uh, I didn't love that. I love, I love being <laughs> with the kids and kind of getting in, involved. So right. yeah, that's really my, my main job in my adult life. Mm -hmm. nice. are, you, are you still teaching? What's that? Are you still teaching, Jason, or are you doing the athletic director? I am. So I'm, I'm the athletic director, so that's the majority of my job. Um, but technically, I'm a teacher. I'm in the classroom a couple times. I do a, um, PE classes. And then this year, with the whole COVID thing and different thing, I'm, I'm actually been in the classroom teaching a couple of government classes because they had to switch some things around. So Well, been in the virtual classroom. In the virtual classroom, yeah. yeah. So they, you know, can't get out on the uh, – the field and the PE classes like we once did. So, um, yeah, but it's been nice. I, it's been a very good career. I l absolutely love coaching. And, um, mm. yeah, I've been blessed to be able to do it for as long as I have. Yeah. It's been fun for yeah. us all. You know, our, mm -hmm. our first four children were boys. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, <laughs> they really grew up alongside him, you know, on the field, at practice, playing their own peewee. He'd go from his practice to their peewee football mm -hmm. practice. And, We'd spend, you know, his games Friday nights, all day Saturday. It was just such a big part of our life sure. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. Busy and fun. Big commitment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so when I was growing up, uh, there, were, there were four kids in my family, and my parents uh, constantly forgot my name, and they called me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious with 10 kids, uh, how do you guys manage with that? I mean, I never forget anybody, really, yeah. but I must say the wrong name. <laughs> a lot. A lot. I mean, it's yeah. just, I'm just trying to, especially if I'm, like, a little bit frustrated, yeah. you know, it's like, I'll probably, <laughs> probably by the fourth name I yell out, it will be the one, the child I'm actually. There you go. <laughs> I know their name, but. <laughs> and, and I almost never make those mistakes. I'm always like, hey, you, I need your help. <laughs> Get over here now. That's so I don't know <laughs> It just, whoever yeah. answers, I, I, it's a win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to help. Yes. <laughs> it's wild, for sure. Yeah. yeah. In a good way, but yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, in Escondido, you guys have 29 chickens to go along with your 10 <laughs> 29 chickens. <laughs> and I heard Jason's, you know, become quite the, uh, I don't know, what, what do you call someone who takes care of chickens? Uh, like a, um, I, I not call, very smart. <laughs> <laughs> I always call him and our two girls who are really in it hard with him, um, our two older girls, the poultry keepers. Yes. Poultry <laughs> keepers. Talk to the poultry yeah. keepers. They know what's going on with the chickens. That sounds good. You know, we, we, we had talked about, because we, we really enjoy, like, eating good quality food and everything else. So I think for 10 years we've been talking about, oh, we should get chickens, we should do this, we should, we should do that. We should garden, we should plant trees. All these things. So, uh, <laughs> Um, you know, COVID hit, we're sitting around and, and I get antsy because I like to move and kind of get going. So I'm home about three weeks and um, Tara goes out and runs some errands. And um, I called my seventh, uh, I think Kale's 18. I said, I called him and said, hey, 
what are you doing right now? He goes, he was out with his, with his girlfriend. And I said, I need you to bring me home some chickens. <laughs> so, Tara didn't even know. And he ended up bringing home. I called the store and, um, I'm kind of the grunt guy doing the labor and the girls are the brains of the project. So, um, he brought home 15 chickens and we ended up doing it right. We didn't lose any of them. So then we ended up uh, ordering 14 more about a month and a half later. So, uh, we got them running around. They all survived. I mean, it's 100%. been nearly a year, uh, and yeah. they lay eggs, and they're fantastic. Yeah. They and really are great, hilarious pets. Just <laughs> yes, pets. Yeah, they're awesome. But we did the whole thing where we started kind of getting into the soil, and, and we like doing science stuff and really cool things. And, mm-hmm. and I literally did not know the difference between a hen and a rooster. I mean, I knew nothing. <laughs> you do have one rooster. We just, yeah. Them, yeah. We uh, figured out we had a rooster in the bunch right. now. So, um, yeah, yeah we, you know, we, we ended up building the second cage and it was pretty cool from scratch. And my, one of my sons said, you know, what's the budget? I said, there is no budget. You know, <laughs> yeah. Zero yeah. dollar budget to so, create this. Second, it was fun. The so we, second coop. Yeah. yeah. We got some, a little bit of land. So we were very awesome. creative. Yeah. Yeah. So what, do you, so what do you do with all the eggs? That's that. <laughs> There's not quite as many now as you, because it takes six months to get them. Oh, so um, yeah. our goal, and, and then when the winter hits, the, the days uh, are shorter. So come March, we're hoping to be averaging about 20, 22 eggs a day. And that, that's about now. what we need. Yeah. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. So not yeah, we do. We go through uh, about 20 a day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Our oldest boys are bodybuilders, and there's uh, everyone's living at home right now. So we will use all the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> the girls are phenomenal cooks, like as far as bacon and yeah. everything. So they get used. Yeah, no joke on that one. I was gonna say, say it kind of makes me think of like bubble gum. Like you're gonna have garlic eggs and you're gonna yes, have yeah. <laughs> salt yeah. eggs, 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 salted eggs. <laughs> you live in Escondido, correct? Yes. So what what is your draw to OMC? What brings you out as a family to OMC? Yeah, we um we've lo- before we'd always go to our local parish. It was fantastic, and there was um. A little bit of shift in a, in a variety of things, and um, we had we had some friends that were from um, our former parish who had gone down to OLM, OLMC, and they were from Escondido, and said, "Oh, you got to come down here. You know, there's a lot of great big families," and we were missing that big family environment at the current parish we're at. You know, things were great and everything, but we thought, you know, part of the the Catholic families after mask and the kids playing and doing that. So we went down a couple times and we did that on and off, you know, once a month, and then we'd be down there two times a month, and um, we just became parishioners, and the, the biggest thing, I think, was the draw was the big families, and then obviously, Father Anthony's phenomenal, so um, just love his, you know, homilies, Father Iggy, so it was just, seemed like a great fit for our, our family. Yeah, and um, it was, you know, great for our kids as well. Mm-hmm. For them, you know, sometimes being from so noticeable as such a large family, you know, has its challenges, especially for the older kids. So it, I think, is really nice for them to just feel like everyone has a lot. You know, it's no, it's, yeah, it's right. a typical yeah. thing here. And yeah. and yeah, I agree. You know, I I'd heard what a faithful pastor they had yeah. there, and it it was true. And not just that, but my older boys would be talking about the homilies long yeah. after, and um, they hadn't really done that before. Yeah. So I think we just felt at home. We felt like it was the right place uh, for us. What really drew you back? Tara, and, and what brought you in, uh, Jason, to the Catholic faith? Yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> when I, my uh, mom, I guess I was nine when we converted to Catholicism. She was going to school at USD at the time. I, she's a single mom. She met my dad, her, my, you know, stepdad now, dad, and um, USD just really influenced her. She had a professor there who was also a priest that she loved, and she decided she wanted to become Catholic. So we converted all of us. They got married in the church, and um, we, it was great. I mean, it was, it was wonderful, but we were definitely Sunday Catholics. To say I was poorly catechized was accurate <laughs> at best, you know, so I, it, as I got older, it was very easy to fall away. This, you know, I just, I just really did. I'd never prayed a rosary in my life. I, we, we were faithful Sunday Catholics, but there was just not a very deep understanding for me. So I was teaching at a Lutheran school at the time. And, um, Jason and I, Jason, when I met Jason, he was wanting to, he had, he was going to church with some coaches mm-hmm. and he was really just wanting to be, he grew up 
you know, with parents that were not believers, I don't think. No. Maybe agnostic. No, not agnostic, but just non-believers. Okay. And um, but I didn't pull – I was around some really good uh, coaches that I looked up to, and they had a, a strong Protestant um, faith. So I started kind of going to the Protestant church and it was, it was good. I really enjoyed it. And, um, but I think there was always more. So what we were married in the Lutheran church, cause that's where we were. It was kind of our compromise because the church yeah. we went to was really, you know, very evangelical, mm -hmm. which I was not used to growing up in a, in a, um, in a Catholic church. So it was, you know, a lot of stand up and wave your arms. And so we, our compromise was this, this Lutheran mm -hmm. church and, we got married there. It was a great place. I mean, mm -hmm. they we were in charge of the junior high youth ministry. Oh, yeah. We did all kinds of stuff <laughs> when we were young and newly married. But um, I think I would say really there were a couple of points that I hadn't even understood when I was Catholic that just started to intrigue me. I started to think about them a lot. I would go to our pastor and ask questions, and the answers weren't super satisfactory. And ultimately, I really missed just the beauty. You know, the very timeless beauty the the incense that you know just all of all of the the beauty I, I would say that I missed the sacraments and I did except for without really understanding that that's what I missed you know not even really mm -hmm. understanding the real presence and all those things so um at that time we definitely were a lot of around a lot of anti-catholics very much so I had said to him that I was really missing this and what do you think and he said, oh, gosh, I mean, we can change churches, babe. We can do, we can do whatever you want, but we can Anything become but that. Catholic. Yeah. I mean, Catholics believe all kinds of crazy things. And yeah. so um, in, in an effort to, you know, back that up and, and help me feel better about it, he started researching and reading, I think, mm. lots of things. But I think Rome Sweet Home was the big one. Yeah, that was a big one. And when that was over, he came to me and said, yeah, well, no, we definitely have to become that. <laughs> like, it was, it was yeah. great. It was not what I was expecting. And uh, it, it was great. He said, I've been looking into this. I've been praying. I've been reading. And, and we need to become Catholic. And yeah. so our whole lives changed <laughs> from that point on yeah. drastically. So I ended up going through the RCIA program. And um, at that point, we'd had our two, you know, two boys. And, you know, we had to, we got remarried in the church again and just, we had a convalidation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was just a huge, huge blessing. And it was, you know, I was going out to find all the, the reasons not to become Catholic and it just, right. you know, there's no going back. So yeah, it all made sense. It, it was did. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was a big commitment. I, I mean, we definitely, I'd say, you know, we had some people who didn't like it and weren't comfortable. Oh, gosh. We, yeah. You know, we planned, yeah, we had different plans than God had for us. And, and as a result, you know, I, I feel, you know, kind of the way you're all in, and we have 10 right. kids to prove right. that. It was like, <laughs> we're not going to do this halfway. We're going to follow yeah. all the rules, do all yeah. the things. And uh, it's just been better than we ever could have imagined. Yeah. Not easy, but really, really purposeful yeah. and That's fantastic. Great. I mean, there's no reason. It's a huge blessing. I've been a, a teacher and I work very hard and do, I pick up all the hours and everything, but we're a single income, you know, she's been at home and able to raise the kids and do all that. And that, you know, that's a big accomplishment in Southern California and it for whatever makes reason, no sense, it makes no sense. <laughs> Even Father Anthony asked me once, how do you do that? And I said, I mean, Jesus, you yeah. should know. <laughs> so yeah, it just has been, yeah, oh, he's always there and it's yeah. been just better all the time. Yep. That's great. Uh, one thing I was curious about, and uh, Jason, I'll ask you first, uh, you know, being a coach, uh, you coached all these years, and obviously you were, you were, you were involved in the sport and you were coaching before um, you started going to church and then uh, before you became Catholic and now all these years after you became Catholic. I was curious, uh, has that affected the way you approach coaching, the way you approach the game, the way, the way you teach all those young, young men? On the it does. Um, I was very fortunate when I first got into coaching, being around some, you know, good Christian guys. So it really was, it was about teaching the game, but more important to with almost every coach on the staff was about developing young men. So um, I, that was always the bottom line of what I want to do is create strong men. Um, and as my faith grew, I was able to kind of be more vocal, not with, um, I, I teach in a public school, so there's that fine line, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm, 
I oversee like the fellowship of Christian athletes group at our school. So there's ways I can be involved in things that um, more so than just being a public school and you can't say anything, but at the, at the heart of it, it's about um, really teaching the kids to be men and own their um, own what it's about. I hate excuses, all, all that stuff. So it's, um, you know, how, how to be your very best. And then talking with our kids, it's like, we use sports as, you know, you've been blessed. Fortunately, they've all been fairly successful in all those things. And it's like, you're doing, you, you've been given these gifts, give the glory to God, like just be thankful for all this and do it for a greater reason, a greater purpose. So um, it definitely influences how I approach it, even though I can't be as vocal as I'd like to be, you know, a lot of times. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, I've heard you say, well, you know me, guys, I'm a Catholic, and you yeah. know, I, I have 10 kids, and this is what, you know, so they see, I think. <laughs> I, and I do. I'm not shy about that, because I want to know, like, important. there's a lot of yeah, emphasis on that. Who I am, and, you know, I'm just, I'm here, but yeah, guys, I'm Catholic, and this is what I believe, and, you know, I'm going to listen to you, but here's where I'm coming from, and um, and I think that that builds the trust in with the kids, and I think with teenage boys, the trust in the relationship is the key to growing, you know, honestly. So sure, sure. yeah, I've been, I, I feel blessed to have been able to do it as long as I've been doing awesome. it. Yeah. All right. And then Tara, for you, um, you shared with us and uh, we're going to, we're going to share with everyone watching uh, some of your, your pictures uh, and fantastic. Um, and see uh, father Anthony had mentioned that you're a really gifted photographer and uh, um, I, now that we've seen your pictures, uh, we understand why you're saying that. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. How is that? Uh, do you find, um, you know, your Catholicism, um, your, your belief in Christ, how, how that enters into how you approach uh, when you're doing your photography and, and that, that passion of yours? Absolutely. Yes. And I would say um, it's, really, it's really born from that. I, mm. it's, it's recent in my life. It's really recent. And um, it really started with, we had a fam some family photographs taken and looking at them, this photographer was amazing. She really is amazing. And um, I looked at them and I thought, you know, for, for better or worse, every day, the ins and the outs, the mundane, this is the, you know, the work of my life, you know, this is my life's work. And um, when they're all together and you, know, you can see the connection and I, I, I don't know, there's something really beautiful about that to me. And so I wanted to show more of that, you know, in my own family's life, in other families, you know, taking my friend, pictures of my friends' kids and my friends with their kids, um, their spouses, really tell a story of family because, you know, family's beautiful. And I, um, and, and really it makes me see my life. I think God does this for me through photography. It really makes me see all these ordinary moments as extraordinary, you know, um, just these simple little connecting moments. The kids are playing, they're observing something, two kids are, you know, whispering to each other or riding bikes. And, and if I capture that, it just, yeah, it's like, it's like a moment that, you know, this beautiful mm -hmm. mo God-given moment you can't get back. So it's definitely from him. And um, yeah, it makes me see the world differently, beauty differently, you know. Yeah, no, that is awesome. We've seen a lot of that in the pictures that you have taken. And um, there was a couple that uh, you know, Ryan and I really were, yeah. were hoping to uh, learn more about. And um, I guess we could go talk about the first one um, is uh, the Patterson Pirates. <laughs> 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 that one was great. Um, that was a good picture. Yeah, could you maybe, maybe um, tell us a little bit about that picture, the background, where was it taken at, um, and so forth. I mean, that was just a regular Tuesday morning, right? Well, first of all, <laughs> I had to hold the, the flag from the back out of the picture for like three hours, you know? So yeah, I just yeah. I got a great we workout that music day. <laughs> we were really into it. It was you pretty know, awesome, actually, yeah. It was actually so great because my, uh, God bless my grandma, my only living grandmother, and, you know, with COVID, she has not, I haven't seen her, and she hasn't been able to see us or any of the kids, and um, but she'll send me little news clippings, and she had sent me mm -hmm. something that, was about if, you know, you were to have a pirate day with your kids, you know, mm -hmm. dress them up and the history of pirates a little bit and, you know, say arg all day long. I don't know. So, so I was laughing when I received it in the mail. It was so cute. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do her one better. I am going to dress yep. my kids up like pirates <laughs> and I'm going to photograph it. I'm going to blow it up and send it to her. So that's what we did. And that 
was the reason we did that, but we had a blast doing it. It was, it was really pretty fun. Cool. Yeah, one of our daughters drew the flag, yeah. and then there was Tara had like pirate theme music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool little. Uh, it was a fun thing. It's fun yeah. to do. And the more I learn, I think oh, I'm going to try that again next year. I can mm -hmm. do it when it was dark and put a light on the <laughs> yeah. pond. That pond's in front of our house, so we have the oh, okay. and everything. And um, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was a blast and it was really for her. Yeah, so. yeah your, your family picture as well. Uh, we'll. We'll be looking at that in the video. You can see right there. Uh, um, your family is absolutely beautiful. You know, and you oh, things from, uh, I don't know if that was a recent picture, but from 22 to one, um, you know, it is fantastic to see that. Oh, of uh, our whole family. Yeah. yeah. Your, yes. Your, and so all, everybody all. except our youngest. In that photograph, I'm pregnant with our youngest. Ah, so okay. it was about two years back. He just turned one. So um, everybody except him. We're due for another one that includes mm -hmm. baby Isaac. So. Yeah. So there was an, another question that I wanted to ask about is um, in regards to family traditions. You know, you have such a large family. Is Are there any lar any traditions that you have um, incorporated in which you know, which one do the kids really enjoy? I'll say, I think Tara has done a phenomenal job, like really creating traditions in our house throughout the year. I, I feel like we are celebrating like every other week something, whether, you know, whether it's a saint day. Um, I, I, the one I love the most is um, the washing of the feet. Right, right. Oh. So, um, Holy Thursday. Yes. Yes. And we, we do that, and our oldest... Some of our kids like it the least. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I we love try it to the tell most. them, this is why it's good. You know, they're like, ah! Some of them love it. Yeah. Them, yes. But we go out and do that, and everybody washes, and we pull names out of a hat, and we have a couple <laughs> kids who are like, I don't want that one. No, not that one. <laughs> so, um, but we have, Thanks, gosh, that, that's my favorite for sure, but we have a million... You, Give a couple yeah, I would say, you know, yeah, Holy Week is big, you know, mm -hmm. so yes, we have yeah. the feed and, you know, Friday morning, it's hot cross buns and the silence, the silence, you know, from oh, yeah. three is, yeah. is challenging for them and so, so good. Yeah. Um, we're, the, the fun ones, like, too, and they're all great, but like, you know, the St. Nick's Day where you put the shoes out the night before right. and the candy the comes out and they're just, they're, there's always something, um, Tara does a really good job, like through the liturgical year, we, we hit the points and uh, it, it's great. It keeps you kind of um, remembering and, and looking forward to something new. And it's, yeah, I really appreciate that. You know, I think she does a great job. That's so nice. And I had to learn that. I didn't grow up with that at all. So you know, anyone watching, any parishioners that want <laughs> some good ideas, Kendra Attorney has a book called Catholic All Year. You can buy it on Amazon and it has just all the history of the liturgical year, the different feast days, all the fun ways you could celebrate them. Mm -hmm. I can't recommend that enough. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. So a lot of the traditions kind of cater towards the, the liturgical calendar and you find yes. different ways to be creative with that. How are you coping as a family with our current, you know, situation? But it sounds like, you know, you're all doing very well with the... Uh, yeah. yeah, we're... Um, we're fortunate we have a little bit of land, about an acre and a half, so we were able to kind of get out and do things. So um, we, you know, between the chickens and growing the food, we've, you know, built tire swings. And I know some people are more um, COVID nervous than others, and we're definitely not the uh, the nervous type. Well, in, the, <laughs> so, in the beginning, we were. So we still have some community, but we still have people that, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. We do. So uh, we're trying to live life and enjoy the blessings. And, um, and in some ways, you know, it's, it's certainly different, but I take a lot of, I'm home a lot more than I ever would have been. I'm able to spend a lot more time with the kids. It allows me to kind of think about some other things I'm passionate about. And um, probably I would have never gotten into. So in a lot of ways, I mean, I COVID is certainly horrific in all the way, but it's like, I think, trying to find there's been a lot of good for our family and I think you know we yeah. spend a lot of time together a lot of fun time we do and our younger kids were already homeschooled mm -hmm. so for them uh, they went a couple days a week we were in kind of like a charter hybrid homeschool so it wasn't a huge transition for the little guys they mm -hmm. it's just kind of extra cool because they've had their dad home so much more um, especially you know 
um, during football, I mean, football season, generally he's busy. He works long, long days, long hours. And so it's been really neat for the kids who would have spent most of that time not seeing him a lot to see him so much. That's been great. I think, you know, it has its things. I, I, you know, I, I'm a little bummed, like for our second oldest, you know, is in his first year of college and it's been strict right. Zoom, Zoom college so far, yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. So I worry about my young adults, I think the most, you know, that sure. I wish they could be doing more normal things. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, great. And I think uh, one last question before we get on to our, to our last area, and this one I had for Jason, um, I was just wondering, Hail Marys, do they work more for you on or off the <laughs> well, if you're going to look at my coaching record, I'm going to say, oh, no. <laughs> um, you know what? We, we strive each year to say more rosaries, and that's a goal we have each year is to, is to do more. Um, I wish we were better than we were, but um, I, I, I love the rosary. I love the Hail Marys. We say that with the girls. Well, the girls, they're our youngest ones, every night before bed. And, um, yeah, it's so – we don't pass real well for our football team. We're, we're more of a, a ground and pound type, you know? <laughs> yes. So, uh, anyway, definitely right. off the field. Wanted to give you about five seconds per question. Just say what comes to mind. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see kind of what answers you get. So the first question I have, so five seconds on the clock. Eggs, deviled, hard-boiled, or scrambled? Scrambled. Have to. That's the correct answer. Hard buttons. <laughs> and deviled eggs, they're a gateway egg. You don't want to do those. <laughs> Stay uh, where are you going first when we can travel again? Hmm. Joshua Tree. Ooh, love it. Yeah. And um, what's the one you always want to go hiking at? The um, in Utah? Oh, um, with the narrows. Uh, yeah. Zion, which Zion. we could probably do that now. Yeah, we're probably good. So, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> you're Let's up. go no, big. Let's yes. Go big. Yeah, we're Girl. going there. All right. All right. So, yeah. Just out of Escondido. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's actually, actually the answer that we were looking for. Anyone? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> what, were, what were NFL players required to wear in games for the first time in 1943? For me? Yeah. For you. <laughs> what were they required to wear for the first time in 1943? Helmets. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. She's been around for a while here. <laughs> I have one for Jason. What does SLR stand for? SLR. So slow, low, and ready to go. I don't know. <laughs> that is I don't not know that. It is single lens reflex. Uh, okay. yeah. Technology and uh, photography, and it was first patented in 1861. That is impressive. That is way Very off of my impressive. radar on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last question, Art. Was, All right. So according to Father Anthony, how late can you show up to mass and still have it count for your weekly obligation? First reading. He said, according to Father Anthony. According to Father Anthony, I'm going to yeah. say the first reading. Okay. And you think now? You think earlier? I'm going to say he, he looks at us badly when we come in late. We see you <laughs> in the back door. <laughs> we don't sneak anywhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think what, like five minutes before? Do you think five minutes? Before I would say the start? first reading. Before he walks down the aisle. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, that's actually pretty close. It's actually the the gospel reading. Yeah. So the okay. okay. So I have heard that, but I've also heard that that's not true. Yeah, I feel like anytime we do that, we just then we go later. We got to bump it up so we <laughs> yeah get in the door on the right time. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah. So that, could could be its own, that could be its own TV show. Our family <laughs> getting ready for mass. I'm telling you what. <laughs> that's been a goal lately, though. We've been get we've, we've been, we've been really better. good at that, and um. You know, trying to like get that. the last couple months. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably true. Gosh, we strive to do it, but man, there's a lot of people to get in the car. <laughs> so many people. So yes. Well, this uh, this has been fantastic. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, Thank you guys. Yeah. Got a super busy schedule. You guys are doing a lot of things, so we don't want to keep you too long, but. Thank you so much for being our, our first guest. Yeah. Uh, we had a blast talking to you. That was a lot our of fun. Our pleasure. Yeah. Us too. We hope we get to meet in real life. And 100%. Hang out. Yeah. 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 So uh, when we see you at Mass, I'll make sure I come and say hi. Good. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you guys. All right. All right. So take care. God bless. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time.